Eddie, basically, if we go back um, to that date in January 1993, um, most days you would simply be, let's make it at its most simplest, a taxi driver who drove around over a million quid a day. Yeah, yeah? that's yeah. And with that comes responsibility mm -hmm. and there also comes temptation. Tell us about that. Mm. People have asked before, you know, it, is it something, you know, that would occur to you if, to have done yourself if you hadn't been you know, under duress? Um, it's just, I'm the same as everybody, you know. Um, I went. I used to sit in the back of a truck and make seats out of like bags of money. You know, what I mean, of course, there's a temptation there. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you know anybody. If I put you in the back of a truck like that, the temptation would be, yeah, maybe. Sure. Yeah, anybody who works in a bar, anybody who's a till, anybody yeah. who deals in cash. You might think about it, but you wouldn't always do it. No, yeah, and, I, and I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't been under duress. Right. No, now mm -hmm. you say you're under duress. Just explain that um, to us. So, so you're there. You're in that position. You're a security uh, van driver. You've got the helmet and all the rest that mm -hmm. goes with that. Where did the duress come from? Uh, previously, um, basically, I mean, you know, the, the pushing it, but I've, I've wrote the story down because there's so many reports of what happened and I was a criminal mastermind and drove away and all this sort of thing and it never happened like that. Basically, my story, I've, I've put in the book, basically, um, people came to me and, and threatened my family and I was, I was told to do what I did. Um, why why would, didn't you go to the police at that point and say, I'm being threatened and blackmailed? Because the police wouldn't have done anything. I was raised in a time when... How do you know they wouldn't have done anything? Because they don't believe me now, they didn't believe me then. It was already but in this the this was before, so why wouldn't they have believed you then? I was brought up in the time, that, at that time, where you looked after yourself, and police really don't do anything. There's no witness protection programme or anything like that in this country. So you believed if you didn't carry out this robbery, then My they family would, hurt would come to harm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I knew they would. I didn't believe it. I knew. And in those days, this is all before 9 11, easier mm. to get out of the country, Absolutely. easier not to be tracked. You head to the United States, your, your wife Deborah goes there, your son's there um, as well. How old was your son when this happened? Three. Three, Three years so, old. Did Deborah know about this? No, absolutely not. How, how did she react to why she was going to America? Uh, didn't take it particularly well that she wasn't going to be able to get in touch with her family again. I mean, she went over there, I was sent her over there on a, you know, um, it was supposed to be a holiday that I was going to join her with later. Um, to what point did you say to her, I've committed this crime and we over. can't go home? When I joined her in America, yeah. Mm -hmm. I joined her in America in time. I mean, it's. It, and she it stayed. Wasn't. She stayed with you. She's my wife, and you know I, I did it to protect her. You know, what would you do? Yeah. Would you turn me in for trying to protect you, sort of thing? Well, no, because no. I, I would have gone to the police and say I'm being blackmailed and get them to stop that. But that's. Yeah, but know. it wouldn't have happened, you know. Yeah. Well, you believe it's, it wouldn't happen. I, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't happen. If you did it nowadays, I mean, you've got plenty of news reports on the TV every day that you know. Mm -hmm. Women are being stalked and they report it to the police and the police don't do anything about it. You know, they... We've only got a minute or so before the weather, Eddie. Um, but you're, after 20 years, you're caught. I mean, you probably uh, at times feel you've got away with all of this, that you enter into a very normal life. I know you had a very good job, a number of jobs, and you moved around America. Uh, eventually, complicated, but you're, you're caught. You're sent back to the UK. You're sentenced to five years for your part in all of this, and you serve three and a half. Mm -hmm. But ironically, you still feel you're in prison, don't you? Yeah. Why? I'm, I lived in America for 20 years. We made a home there. We made, you know, I, I raised a family there. My son was born there. I, you know, my other son was raised as an American. Um, this is no longer my country. My home is America. But you I'm can't not, go back. But I can't go back, you know, so, yeah, I'm, we're all in prison, if you like, still. But is that not a consequence of committing a crime? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't... Pretend that I'm not a crook. I don't pretend that I did, didn't deserve what I'd done. You know, getting a prison sentence and serving a mm -hmm. sentence, and that. And going back to the point, you know, I've never denied the fact, and I yeah. pleaded guilty to the crime. You know, we've got, uh, we got 15 seconds. Oh, um, going back to the points Ruth made, would you have done anything any differently? Um, would I have done anything differently? No, I wouldn't have gone to the police. Eddie, that's Eddie Mayer, known as Fast Eddie.